Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to do zoom and slide transitions in Resolve and save them for future use so you don't have to recreate them every time you want to use them. I've already set up several of them for myself. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give them away in a link below. There's 14 total and I'll show them to you right now. I made this qu quick little clip to where you can see them in action. My little promo video for this tutorial basically. So one, two, three, four. There's a lot of zoom ins and twirls, zoom outs and twirls, different degrees. And then the slides up, down, left, and right. So I'm going to show you how to make your own, or you can download the ones I already have. I'm just going to do one or two of them to show you how they're done, and the rest, you, once you learn your skills, you can see how to do them for yourself. So, that being said, let's get started. You're going to need two clips. One thing to know about these clips is that you will have to have a little room on both sides as far as spillover so you can have a transition. Because you're going to have to move them beyond what's on the screen. So just to do that with these clips, I'm going to go back 10 frames on each one. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Bring that in here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this way you have room to overlap. So now our transition will be here. So we're going to go in 10 more frames and cut these up. You've probably seen this before if you've ever done any kind of After Effects transitions that you want to use in Premiere. You have to go to After Effects, create them, and then bring them back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Cut it there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we will cut it here. And we will take the latter clip, bring it above, and then stretch them out so that they cover each other equally. So this is 20 frames. This works pretty well for transition. You can always retime it after the fact if you want it to be longer or shorter. Take these guys here, right click, add to Fusion Clip. Just like in Premiere, this is basically say edit or create an After Effects composition. Same type of thing. Let's go over this guy here and go into the Fusion tab. I try to make this as simplistic as possible in the terms of how many nodes you need, but there's a lot going on within the nodes. So I am a beginner. I've only been doing this for maybe a week, and I decided I wanted to crash course learn, so I, I watched a few other tutorials, kind of learned some things about nodes, and now, but I decided I wanted to make my own transitions because I missed those. I used to have Mr. Horse transitions. If you ever use that plugin, it's really good, but it's only for After Effects. So I have to do this stuff myself. And I'm by means no expert, but I just dove into it, took the time, and figured it out. So I'm going to select our fusion clip here. So we have our media, two media ends, our merge, our media out. For organizational sake, I'm going to put the media in, which is the bottom layer from the edit timeline at the bottom. So if you work worked with layers, especially using Adobe products before, like I was, up to down is important in how you view your workflow. So the only other tr node that we need for this is a transform node. So we'll click the merge node, hit the transform node here, and it's online. And this, as far as nodes go, this is all we need. So we're going to start with the transform node, and we're going to do a zoom in. So basically for zoom in, we want everything to get bigger. Our 20 frames up here, you can see right here, all we can see is the top layer, because that's what's on top. So what we're going to do here is animate the transform. So when I do these, I like to have the frames in for animation by one. So I'm not going to start on zero. I'm going to start on frame one. I'm going to add a keyframe here at size one. Move it over here to 18. And then I'm going to change this to eight. Make it really big. You might wonder how that's going to work. Well, I'm going to show you in a second. So you're seeing it's moving in like this. Okay. So next we need to turn off this top layer for half of this transition so we can zoom out from the bottom one. How do we do that? Well, we're going to pick our time position. We're going to say we want this to start the second layer to start on frame 10. So we're going to go to frame 9, go to the merge node, we've got a keyframe on blend. Turn that to zero. Now we can see the first layer. Go to the next keyframe, change that to 1. 
Now we see the top layer. Scroll through this, you see we zoom in, and then right here it switches and we keep zooming in. But the second layer is too big. This is how we fix that. Again, in the merged layer, which mostly affects the top layer that I've noticed. I don't know 100% how it works, I'm learning it, but these are things I found out as I was trying to figure this out. Since we are increasing the size by eight, we want to decrease the size of just this layer by the inverse of eight. So 12%, 12.5% or 0.125. So what we're going to do is go to change the size under the merge node to 0.125. And when we do that, at the full size, it is 0.125 times 8 equals 1, so its scale is 1. So we start off here, we zoom in right here, as soon as it hits the 10th frame, it comes into existence, and then it zooms into place. So if we watch that, not that exciting yet, but this is the zoom in, this is what we're getting to. So we'll stop that guy. What we're going to do next is change this to where it fills the whole frame. And the way to do that is to change its edges. We also have to keyframe that on, and I'll show you why here in a second. So if we right here, we want to fill this in with the mirror effect, which if you've ever set up one of these type of transitions in After Effects, this is how it's normally done. So if you go here to edges, click on mirror, it fills out that space. So whenever we zoom in, there's, you get that edge there. Let's play it again. So you see the transition. It looks a little stiff, but we're going to fix that. So how are we going to fix that? We're going to add the keyframes for the transform. So if we go out here and click Spline, I think it's a little bigger here, and we're going to look at the transform size. Click that, and it's going to give our keyframes. They kind of disappear. Hit this button right here, zoom to fit. This brings us our two keyframes. So we obviously want to ease these. So we select them both. And you can either tap this smooth button or you can do shift or yeah, shift S. Smooths them out and it gives you these uh, curve handles to pull so that you can tweak it. For this type of transition, you want it to be kind of abrupt, but not too abrupt. So I like to make this S curve pretty S y, for lack of a better word. Kind of tight like that. So let's see how it looks. So it looks way better. It zooms in really good. Now this is where you would tweak how harsh or abrupt you want your transition to be. And how like how fast you go through the first clip versus the second clip. I'm going to leave it like this because this is a good balanced zoom in. Now the only thing we need is some motion blur to sell it. So how do we do motion blur and fusion? Well, keep it on. Let's go ahead and close out this spline tool. Click on your transform node, you go to the second window under here, it's settings, and this is where your motion blur is. Turn it on. Let's go in a little bit so when there's some good motion going. I like to crank my quality up to about four or five. And I bump the shutter angle, even though it's correct, we want it to be a little exaggerated, so I do crank it up a bit. And I'll take that center bias and put it up a hair too, so it really kind of shows the zoom. It's overdone. It's only there for a fraction of a second, so might as well take full use of it. So now, let's see how this looks. That looks good. I like it a lot. If we stop it and kind of go through, you see it zooms really well. Since it's a motion blur, it automatically slows it down towards the end and speeds it up at the beginning. This looks really good. Now, this would be done. Here we go, we're good to go. If we pop over to edit, I'm gonna play it once to let it cash in, because you can see this red bar means it's gonna be slow. You'll see that blue bar coming through. Once this is full, that means it's fully cached and it should play back smoothly. Now you can adjust how quick this comes in with those handles under the spline uh, window. I'm going to leave it like this, but again, this is tuned to how you want it. That hard S is pretty good, but I might put a harder part of that S towards the beginning of the clip so that it's faster. 
Like I feel here, it might be a tad slow. But that's 100% adjustable. Now I'm going to go back into Fusion because I'm going to show you what else we can do to kind of make this look a little more exciting. One thing that's nice is maybe to bump up the brightness. So it has a little bit of a flash, which I think helps the transition. So I'm going to do with that, I'm going to add a, where's it at? Right here. Brightness contrast. Select transform, add brightness contrast. And we're going to just keyframe some settings here. So we'll go right where the transition is. I'm going to add a keyframe for gain. Pump it up right here. Make it a little bright. Now I'm not going to go all the way to the beginning. I'm going to come in about maybe frame four. And if you hit this little white dot here, it'll reset that value and create a keyframe. Come back out here to about maybe 15. Do the same thing. So let's watch it again. The brightness kind of helps a little bit. Matter of fact, I'm going to turn it up just a little bit more. Let's try it again. I think it looks pretty good. So now we have our zoom in transition. And now we can save it as a macro or even as a template here. So if you go over to your effects panel, click templates, you can create your own just like this. And I'll show you how. It's real easy. All you have to do, what I recommend doing, making sure everything is nice and aligned, ready to rock. I'd like to create a group out of these objects here. So I'll highlight them. Control G makes a group. F2, I'm going to rename that group. I'm going to call it Zoom In. You can't use spaces in group names, so even if you add spaces, it'll delete them. So now that I have this guy here, I've got my media one, media two. So now they're all clean, nice together. We're ready to rock. So I'm going to take all these, highlight them, right click on one of them somewhere, go to settings, and save as. Now, this is where you got to go. My computer is called Z Station. You have to go to your users, the username, App Data, Roaming, Blackmagic Design, DaVinci Resolve, Support, and then Fusion, not Macros. Go to Fusion, you're going to go down to Templates, and then you're going to go to Fusion. Now in here, I highly suggest making a new folder. So for this, we'll do New Transition. Transitions. Go in there, and we'll call this what we want to call it. Zoom in. Transition. Ta-da. It's not here yet because we have to restart Resolve. So I'll go ahead and close Resolve down. Make sure I saved it. So now Resolve's back up, and I'll show you how we can add that template. So I'm going to take this guy here, remove it. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm putting this back into a brand new position like you just started. Like so you're on a new project or new part of your composition and you want to add your transition. So we'll do the same thing as before. 10 frames one way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Cut it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we'll cut it again. Stack these two. Always have the first clip on the bottom, second clip on top. Highlight them. New Fusion Clip. Now we have it selected, go into Fusion. So we got this guy, just like we had before, but this time we're going to delete everything. Highlight it all. Delete it all. Go to Template, the Templates. Go to your newly created file. This is New Transitions I created. And you'll see it right here. Zoom in Transition. Select it. Boom. It's all set up. You don't have to do anything else. Just have to go to your media out, select it to your monitor, and it's rock and roll. And you're all set up. You can do this for each one that you create, save it, and then you'll have a whole list of ones that you can just pop in here, create really fast, and be on your way as far as the rest of your editing goes. It took me a little bit to figure out because, again, node editing is very new to me. I've been using After Effects for well over a decade. 
and it's a little bit different, but I actually like using this program. It makes me think again. Uh, I kind of like that. I'm having to figure stuff out, and I do like the problem, problem solving of doing this. So I want to show you one thing real quick. Go to my other project. So these are all the transitions I've done. So I'm just going to play this for you real quick as it names everything. I was This is my more complete example video. And these are the ones I'm going to include in a zip file that you can download, put into your Fusion Templates folder, and you can use. And you can modify them even. You can go in and change your keyframes. These will include the brightness adjustments, chromatic aberration, things to kind of sell the transition a little bit more, make it just a little more interesting. But I'm going to play all these for you so you can see all the different versions I have. So we have the zoom in that we just did. Then we're going to have different rolls. So roll 180 degrees to the left, then we do 90 degrees to the left. So if you don't want to, not too much. And then the other direction, we're going to go right, both 180 and 90. So these use drag and drop, you have to mess with anything. I drag and drop it, you saw I did before. Zoom out, same thing. We do all these versions, roll left, two different degree levels, roll right, two different degree levels. And then we're gonna have the swipe lefts and swipe lefts, or, or whip pan, basically. Let's get through all these rolls. And here are the slides, or the whip pans. These are up and down, left and right. Looks like I messed up that other one. I need to fix that. Good thing I watched this one last time. Or I had an extra one. Something happened in there. But you get the point. And if you want these to go faster, I'll zoom in here. If you click on any one of these and turn on the read time controls, but also use this with the trim edit. You can speed these up. So if it's too slow for you, you can make it really fast. See how fast that was versus, you can stretch them out a little bit, but you're dealing with a little bit of frame interpolation. So it might not look quite as good. Shorten them up works perfectly fine. So there we go. That didn't take very long to create. You can make your own or you can download the ones I've already done and just get back to editing. I'd like to thank you for watching it. Hope it was helpful for you. If you have any questions or suggestions, please put them in the comments. I am by no means an expert. I am just figuring this out on my own, just like a lot of people are. I spent a lot of time looking at other tutorials and trying to figure this stuff out for myself, and I've decided to share what I've learned too. So if you like it, click like. Subscribe if you'd like. I could always use more subscribers. Who couldn't? And uh, until next time, thanks for watching.